Coming up today on Houston Life, be proactive with your health. Why keeping up with regular checkups and exams is so important and the one screening we should all be doing starting at age 45. Plus, no cookies for Santa this year? How a possible cookie shortage can affect some of your favorite holiday snacks. And whether you're shopping for your father, your husband, boyfriend, or friend, we've got the ultimate gift guide for him with items all under 50 bucks. Disney on Ice glides back into NRG Stadium this weekend, and I've got a behind-the-scenes look at some costumes and props. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. <laughs> Is that for real? Oh. Live from Studio B at KPRC Channel 2. Houston Life starts now. Y'all, welcome to Friday. It's finally here on Houston Life, December 11th. You know who else is finally here? Cambrell Marshall. Amen. Hey, it's How so you good doing, to sister? have you at the desk. I uh, know, it's been a while. It's been a hot minute. But Absolutely. We've done this before. We have. Once, <laughs> once or twice, we've, we've done it. Cambrell is filling in for Derek, who's taken a couple days off, well-deserved. They're getting ready for their move. And um, I'm so glad to see you here. Usually it's hi, hi, hi in the hallway and yeah, running and yeah, gunning to something else. But yeah. You know, I thought about this. We, we had a chat last week, I think. I caught you when you were eating and we talked. And it's been a, it's been a long time that we've been together in one way or another. And Absolutely. And been on the air as colleagues and co-anchors and all that kind of stuff. And I so, know. Look at this, what I found. I dug in the archives of the oh, Twitterverse. Wow. This was November 2014. Was it really? Yes. Wow, I was behaving. You caught me behaving, too. Sort of. I'm not sure what I'm doing. What was, <laughs> what was happening there? That was bright and early in the morning, too. Mischief, mischief. A little bit. So, wow, yeah, because we were anchoring. Yeah. Were we anchoring then? Wow. Yeah, we guess we were, weren't we? Yeah. It's been a while. So we, we, we anchored together for a year. We did. Uh, <clears throat> in my book. That is coming. It's coming. One it's day. It's coming. There's going to be some information in there about something. <laughs> <laughs> Good chapters, let me tell you. We oh. talked about them. <laughs> but I, I have my PhD in procrastination, though, so it may be a while. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes, there's some things about the business, you know, you right. ups and downs. And so I was basically finishing out a year of my contract, and that was the year with you. Right. You had fun. Saturday mornings with you yes. and Saturday evenings with Rachel McNeil. That's right. You I did was the I, Well, there you go. <laughs> we keep you on your toes. That's what we're all about. It was good. You know what's so crazy? I remember meeting you the very first time I met you. Uh, I came to KPRC. It was for my interview, but it was your birthday weekend. Was it, it was this time then, uh, that many years ago? That many years ago in 2002? Two? <laughs> yeah, 2002. Wow, okay. I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah your yeah. birthday weekend, because I think you were having to get ready for a big party, and you were kind of telling me all about it, and... Oh, 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 it, oh, that was, oh, that was the week, that was, was my 50th birthday yes, party. Yes, Cambrell. Yes, oh, that was a big party, That too. was a good one, right? Ooh, four seasons, hanging yeah. back. You did I, the splits on the dance floor, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I'm still broke from that party, by the way. I'm still <laughs> Best party you ever threw for yourself, isn't it? Unlike the Four Seasons Pest Control, this is the real Four Seasons. Right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so you came to Houston in a good old song like Prince, 1999. 1999. 19, wow. May, May of 99, yeah, from, uh, from Miami. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, that was the... I think about it, so 40, ooh, oh. whoa, this is, this is a little bit before. <laughs> that's not 1999. No, that's like, that's like, <laughs> that's like 76. Kimbrell, I mean, seriously, other than the hair is a little different, you look exactly the same. That's not true. It is 100% true. true. Look at the smile. Yeah. Every We need a split screen. Can no. we work on the split screen? Because I'm telling you, you look exactly the same. My face was fuller then, I think. I've, got, I've gotten a little thinner in the face, I think. Okay. <clears throat> Still handsome. Anyway, had the fro going though. Yeah. Had the link case fro going. Oh yeah. And big back old when wide you wore tie. big old ties. Yeah. Yeah. And the 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 picnic basket, <laughs> picnic blanket suit. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the Dorito chip collar, but you know. What you couldn't see there was there were little oranges in that suit. Oh. See the oranges and the browns. Mm. See the orange was pop. Nice. See, I've learned to do it a little bit more subtly now. Uh, First of all, let's talk about the ties, because when did you start? I feel like I remember when you started doing the bow tie, because you just kind of would mix it in, but then it, yeah. it's turned into every day. It has. Be, people won't let me go back to wearing the real ties anymore. Yeah, because you're the only one that does it. I was doing an event. I was emceeing an event on a... It was, it was Christmas 
time. It was around this time of the year. I was emceeing an event. I didn't have time to change back into regular clothes, so okay. I came on the air with the formal stuff. And people said, wow, we like that. So I said, well, let me, let me do this the next day. And so it's kind of stuck. Yeah, and yeah. Do, you, do you tie them yourself? Oh, absolutely. You absolutely. do? Oh, yeah. You can, I, I, was, you, I was doing the pre-tied ones for a while. Okay. But you don't have this wider selection. Oh. And so you have a bigger selection. And so I saw the, uh, a 10 year old boy on YouTube. That's okay. how I learned. Because I said, okay, I'm sorry. If a 10 year old boy is going to do this, oh, oh, heck, I'm going to learn this. Yeah. So at the end of about an hour, my arms were like this. <laughs> 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 like, oh, yeah, Whose oh, yeah. idea was this? Oh, yeah. But you, you know what? You wear it so well. It's now your signature, yeah. and when I, I think that's people love to see it oh. too, because you have to kind of zoom in, you know, especially for sporting events or holidays, and you bring out the the ones that kind of. Right. Well, this is French horns today. French horns. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Throwback picture. Yeah. Ray Leonard was here not long ago, right? Yeah. Well, that was Ray and me and Floyd Patterson, who was the heavyweight champion of the world. Wow. Back in the day where I was a sports yeah. tester. And so... Is that how you start? I remember when you met him again, when he yep. came here yep. uh, to the station a few years ago. Um, you started out in sports, yeah, right? Yeah, my, my first 19 years was in sports. Sports in Phoenix, Detroit, Hartford, and then sports director in Miami. Okay. At two different stations in Miami. So that's how I began this whole journey. And, um, and but you, you fell into weather. Yeah, but I've always been a weather guy. Right. It's I, kind of been your passion oh, for a while. Yeah. I saw a high school newspaper article of me talking about, you know, where they did these things with the students about, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, a meteorologist. And then I, then I ran into the prerequisites for meteorology, which all that calculus and physics and stuff, <laughs> stuff that your brother does. <laughs> yeah, no. The not smart brother? The smart yes. brother, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I said, no, I'm not going to do that. But later on in life, I, Mississippi State has a program where they fold all that stuff in the curriculum. And that's what made it work for me. Yeah. So between sports and then news and then management and then meteorology. So, that is so fantastic. Yeah. And I think it's great. It's, it, there's never, I think, a bad time to start something you've always wanted to do. And I think so many people are, are in that situation now, uh, whether they're taking sculpting yeah. classes yeah. online, learning how to tie a bow tie on YouTube. <laughs> We're just figuring it out, yeah. you know. Yeah. And life is too short to do something that you really don't want to do. And I've been talking to kids, because I talk to kids a lot, and I talk to them about careers and all those kinds of things. And I always say to them, never look back on your life and say, man, I wish I would have. Right. I know. And so there I was. I said, well, you can preach to yourself, Campbell. So I started taking meteorology classes while I was anchoring here. I yeah. was anchoring the noon, four, and five, or the morning show. And the, four, you know, five, six, and, seven, eight, nine, and whatever. ten. But so. I said, you know, as long as you're in Houston, yeah. where there's tropical stuff, this is the why place not to do weather. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I started doing. And so, okay. Yeah. I love it, and it's I love fun. when you're on. Of course, my mom watches you all the time. I know she's watching right now, so she's going to be very excited to see your Cambrell. I know. I did I tell her mom. you said hello the other day, oh, and she yeah. said hello we back. Love so, mom. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your loves. Oh, my babies. Yes. Yeah. Well, first love. Yeah, my first Debbie. love. Yeah, she said yes. Sweet Debbie. 41 years ago. Congratulations. She said yes. I know, I know. Happy I was anniversary. You just I celebrated, right? Celebrated in September. S yeah. Yeah, yeah. And her birthday was uh, last week, and mine is next week. Yeah. So that baby picture was me with Cammie when she was a baby. Oh, and then so there she is sweet. now. And there they are. Cammie's on uh, the right, and Danielle is on the left as we were all together, and there's my daddy. Oh, you're sweet, Papa. And my sisters. We were at uh, my youngest daughter's wedding in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and all of us got together, and he that was 93 so at that time, yeah. This is the newest one. That's Riel, who obviously loves her Papa. Uh, of course. You know, why wouldn't she, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but she likes her, he, she likes her <laughs> Nana, too, but she really likes her. And Halloween, she was a basketball. Oh, my <laughs> word. That is the best <laughs> Halloween costume. It was great. Stop it, it that's amazing. Great. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I love, and, and you know, of course, everybody loves and watches you, and so they know, they can see Riel growing up and yeah. getting bigger, and we knew when you became a grandpa, but how you are always connected to what's going on in our backyard. So not only do you have your family, but you have really your extended family when it comes to volunteering, because you have so many organizations that you're tied to. It's been a good life for me, and so it's uh, got that from my parents who give back, gave back. My mother was a 
volunteer. My father was a volunteer teacher yeah. as well, but that's what you learn from them. And so I've always done that since I first walked in the door here in Houston in 99. I started getting involved with the Big Brothers Big Sisters, Collaborative for Children, right. Coleman, uh, American uh, Cancer Society, the March of Dimes, and just stepped down from three years as the board chair of the YMCA of Greater Houston. Right. That's which, is, which has been a, just the marvelous thing that I've, best thing I've ever done in my life. Right, yeah. right. You've yeah. done so many great things. You and I, we did the March of Dimes. Yes. And that, that's, we were in Birmingham. The, the YMCA has a freedom tour. We right. went all through all the cities of the South and the 16th Street uh, church where the bombing happened with those little girls. Uh, we were able to go there, and that's one of the things we took all these kids to be able to see right. the history of what's going on there. So, right, and yeah. actually be there. I think. Yeah, you were really involved with a lot of those things, too, out at the Coleman race, especially. Yes. Many, many years. Yes. Um, and you guys were the ones who took the picture. I, I, I'm, I'm going to find We're going to get the picture. It's of, a good one. Of you, me, Rachel McNeil, Lauren Freeman, Amy Davis, and Daniela Guzman, right. who were all pregnant at the same time. All pregnant at the same time, and, with you in the middle. Yep. That was the chair of my uh, March of Dimes thing and so it was uh, it was a good time what do you grab good time you okay so you have a paddle over oh. here you know when, when you sit in that seat we usually like to play a little game okay so we're gonna play a little game today you ready to have some fun yeah some more fun yeah. continued fun yeah. Yeah. Um, here's how it works a question is gonna pop up on the screen I'm just hoping you and I could read it okay we might need some help <laughs> we, it's, it's, big ask. it's big enough it's big enough the question is gonna say basically who's most likely to and we have to use our arrows to answer so is it Yourself, or is it? Oh, I see. You know, I got gotcha. you. Pointing away or pointing at ourselves. Got it. Okay. Got it. All right. So you want to pop up the first question? Uh, who's more likely to dance in the rain? I mean, I feel like both of us. Hmm. You're uh, not going to dance in the rain? No, 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 no. I'll forecast the rain. I won't dance. Okay. In the rain. All right. All yeah. right. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> who's most likely to forget their oh, umbrella? Oh, oh, oh. well. No, That's why it, I'm dancing. And you would think I wouldn't. <laughs> I know. What's happening? I, know. I, I, I remember today, oh. but, but I'm just, I forget everything. I know. I do, yeah. too. I need yeah. reminders, constant yeah. reminders. Yeah. Okay, next. Who's most likely to get in trouble at work? <laughs> I, was a girl, I almost told a story about where, like, going to go in your chapter. I might get fired if I tell that story. So we're, we're going to hold that one from later. Okay, I'm glad we know each other well. Oh. Who's most oh. likely to embarrass their kids? Oh, 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 I love that. That's my job. That's a good one. That's a full-time yeah. job. Absolutely. And they, uh, a girl dad, too. So yep. lots yep. of good stuff. Yep. That always yep. happens. Um, most likely to sing in the shower? Not me. You're going yeah. now. You yeah. won't. You won't yeah. dance in the rain, but you're going to sing. Oh, a I'll sing up a storm. Really? Oh, absolutely. What do you? Singing? I should record it. Oh, you know, whatever, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. I feel like it's like Lionel Richie or like Cool in the Gang. What is it? Well, I don't know. I don't remember the words. Like I don't remember my umbrella. I don't remember the words. So I like. So you're just like mm -hmm. humming. <laughs> 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 Visual. Okay. So who's most likely to sleep until noon? <laughs> oh, that's Gosh. Not, no. You know what? I probably could. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't sleep. Because no. I have to get up on Saturday and Sundays. I'm up at 2.30. And listen, the clock is there. Because once you're off the schedule, it took me forever. I still wake up sometimes yeah. at like 12, 15 a.m. And I'm, oh, where am I supposed to be? I still, and I haven't done that schedule in years. Last time I slept till noon was college. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I could do it. I could. I haven't. But um, who's most likely to lock their keys in the car? Done it. <laughs> done it. <laughs> right outside in that parking yeah. lot. Yeah. Waiting for the AAA guy. <laughs> <laughs> they know me. Oh, Cambrell, you're calling oh, again. Oh, you're huh? again. You again? We're just going to get an extra set of keys. You're, the AAA guy's going to make a set of keys for you. Was that our last one? Oh, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. That was a good game. I love going down memory lane. Thanks so much for being here because I know you still have to get up early uh, for the weekend. Today is your, what day of the week is it? Uh, it, it it's my Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're almost there. Yeah, almost, almost there. there. Yeah, yeah. All Hump right. Day. We got a lot more to get to here on Houston Life as 2020 couldn't get any worse. Details of a possible cookie shortage that could have you feeling like a real Scrooge this holiday season. Plus, we've got Lauren Kelly giving us a behind-the-scenes look at Disney on Ice Presents called Dream Big. That's in town this weekend at NRG. Houston Life, back in two minutes.
Okay, welcome back to the show. Whether you bake them with family, gift them, or leave them out for Santa, cookies, of course, are a big part of any holiday celebration. Yeah, we've seen that year after year. According to a recent survey from Top Data, across the country, demand for cookies has risen 25% during the pandemic. I'm not shocked about that. No. Major cookie manufacturers are reporting that Americans could see a cookie shortage this year. What? I know. On all cookies? Yeah, yeah no, I... I how can that be? Well, I mean, I do like a good Oreo, and I have been known to eat a lot of Oreos. Yeah, okay, but I, I get that. I get that, but okay, I see toilet paper and... and I don't and, see the toilet paper. Why are we hoarding toilet paper? Because well, now you still can't find it now. Now you can't find it again. That and Clorox wipes, they say. Done. I, I don't have any problem finding any of it, by the way. So if you need some, come see me. Because <laughs> every time I go shopping, I go once every once a week. I right. go shopping 6 a.m. when the oh, store opens. You go to the... the yeah. I, I know where my store is. I know where everything is. I go in, I get everything. I don't have a problem with any of that stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can I've I give heard... you some money and you can buy them for me? You got it. Okay. <laughs> You got it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm very nervous about this cookie shortage, but we want to hear from you. What have you been snacking on during the pandemic? I mean, does it have to be one thing? Because I feel like the wheels completely have fallen off the bus for me. And things have changed since the pandemic first started. Because yeah. we were really locked down. Now we're less locked down. Right. But I, I mean, but I'm always a salt. I'm not really heavy on a sweet. So, like, I want some Cheetos and Cheez-Its, you know? Yeah, you know. I, In a deep crisis. <laughs> Which we have been, right? right? Oh, oh, and I got the little chi little small cans of chili. Oh, yeah. And the t t tortilla chips. Listen. With the little sprinkle with the cheddar cheeses, the Mexican cheddar cheeses oh. on top. 30 seconds in the microwave, dipping in the chili. Oh! Look at you with a new snack. Are you kidding me? That's good. Okay, we want to hear from you. I'm going to get some chili and some cheese and some other stuff today. We want to hear from you. It's on our social media yep. pages. Yeah, yeah, we got that. Hey, we're going to give you a chance to catch all of your favorite Disney friends along the world-class figure skating as Disney on Ice Dream Big glides into town this weekend. That's right. And from The Little Mermaid to Frozen and Coco, Lauren Kelly is taking us behind the scenes for a look at some of the cool props the ice skaters are using during the show. Disney on Ice Dream Big is back in Houston at NRG Stadium this weekend, and I got a COVID test, which is why I'm able to be right here next to the ice that is right behind me with part of the ensemble cast. Isabella, she's joining me today Hi. to go over some of the fun props that you yes. guys use in the show. Look at this. I know that y'all can look at some of these props and know exactly where they're from, but let's break down some of the other ones that people might not know. Yeah, these are just a small amount of the props that we have in our show. We have so many items that the skaters use throughout all the different numbers. But of course, as you can see, these are some very clear classic props. I'm trying. I'm waiting for the genie yeah. from Aladdin. He's not here yeah, yet. Maybe he's still probably sick. still asleep. <laughs> yeah, it's too early for him. Okay, what about this telescope? <laughs> this is something that Prince Eric uses to spot Ariel when she comes out of okay. the water. And I know that you guys know yes. where the rose is from. from Beauty and the Beast. Belle picks that up as she's skating. Fun yeah. fact, my middle name is Rose. Oh my gosh, <laughs> mine is too. No way! Yeah. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> All right, the guitar. Yes, this is from our Coco segment. Okay. So Goofy actually plays this when okay. we're introducing Miguel. And you know, of course you see Miguel has a very special Coco guitar. Absolutely. And here's a mop, another mop from our sailor segment. So Prince Eric uses the telescope, but some of our sailors use these mops. Oh, Isabella, these are amazing. Thank you so much for showing oh, this. And this course. is obviously from Ursula. Oh, under the this sea. is very cool. Yeah, very creepy. You guys, <laughs> don't go anywhere because behind Isabella are the costumes. And coming up a little bit later on in the show, I'm going to show you where they appear in the big show. So thank you very much. Thank and you. Don't you guys go anywhere. Thank you so much, Lauren. We'll see you again later on in today's show. That is great. I'm glad they're back for a little performance oh, yeah. and taking the precautions. The kids are going to love it. They're I think back. everybody's going to love it. It feels normal now, doesn't it? A little bit. To be able to go somewhere, yeah. put it on your calendar, and kind of do something other yeah. than sit in your front yard, it's kind of nice, Netflix, right? Netflix, yeah. All right. When we come back, how colon cancer is impacting a younger patient population and the new recommended age to start screenings. And still ahead, we've got you covered with gift ideas for every man on your Christmas list. Even if he says, <laughs> like me, he doesn't need anything. <laughs> Houston Life, we'll be right back.
that's important to keep up with your regular screenings, even during a pandemic. Joining us now to talk about who should be screened for colon cancer and when is gastroenterologist Dr. Najim Joffrey with Memorial Hermann Medical Group. Dr. Joffrey, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I understand the American Cancer Society is now recommending people with average risk of colon cancer to begin screenings at age 45 instead of age 50. Can you explain why they made the change? Well, um, the GI community certainly is applauding this change. The colon cancer is actually the third deadliest cancer in the United States and continues to be detected in younger and younger patient populations. Uh, the previous recommendations were at age 50, to start off at age 50, uh, and now they've reduced it, and many other societies have also reduced it down to 45. And when it comes to symptoms, should people be on the lookout? What, what exactly for colon cancer? Can you walk through the symptoms? Sure. So un unfortunately, many individuals don't have any symptoms at all. So they go in for routine screening, and that's when they're uh, diagnosed with colon cancer. Uh, other individuals may have symptoms such as abdominal pain, change in their bowel habits, blood and stool, uh, unintentional weight loss, um, or lab work may show that they're anemic. But it's unfortunate that many individuals are asymptomatic at the time of diagnosis. Most people, you know, when they hear the word colonoscopy, they kind of make a face or they think, oh, I can maybe wait, it seems so intrusive. I mean, break it down for us, doctor. What is it basically? So the colonoscopy, I tell patients, uh, the worst part is the night before. You have to drink all this mixture of stuff and you clean yourself out to go to the bathroom, you know, multiple times. For the procedure, everyone is sleepy and comfortable throughout the procedure. Uh, it's, a, it's a procedure where we go in through the rectum, throughout the entire colon with the tube that has a camera on it, uh, and get a good visualization of the, uh, of the colon for any abnormalities, uh, any causes of bleeding, any causes of their symptoms that they may be experiencing. The procedure itself lasts about 30 minutes. Um, you know, the patient generally recovers for another 30 minutes afterwards, and many patients ask us when we're going to start right after they wake up, uh, you know, and we tell them we're already done because it's a pretty comfortable procedure itself. And basically, I mean, that's the picture that you're looking for. You either are getting rid of what doesn't need to be there, those polyps or something, or the problem, and if you're sure. asymptomatic, then you're getting a picture of, you know, this could be a problem later on. Correct, right. So it can be, uh, you know, used for screening and we visualize the entire colon. Uh, it can be therapeutic or, you know, if we find any lesions, we're able to take those out right then and there and send those off for analysis where a pathologist can look under the microscope and tell us what type of polyp it is. Uh, and then based on that, we repeat the colonoscopy as we risk stratify the individual. And let's be honest, we really need to destigmatize colonoscopies and seeing a doctor when you're experiencing any kind of GI issues. Here's your soapbox, doctor. Well, you know, men are notorious for delaying care or brushing off their symptoms. So it's important for family members to encourage everyone to be proactive in their health, keeping up with screenings and seeing a doctor when they're experiencing symptoms. Unfortunately, a lot of times people uh, wait uh, and because of that, they're diagnosed at much later stages than they would have if they had um, uh, seek care early on. And, you know, headlines, of course, when Chadwick Boseman, um, when he passed away uh, of, of colon disease, um, when you see somebody that is high profile and now the story is out there, does it give validity, you think, for people to say, you know what, I'm going to go and do that? Right, well, it certainly hit a spotlight on the colon cancer. Um, you know, interesting, he was diagnosed at an age that is even younger than what's recommended for, for screening. So it's important to see a GI and be proactive in your health uh, if you're experiencing GI symptoms or have a family history of colon cancer. Absolutely, yeah, I think he was 43 years old. Uh, and let's just be honest too, that given the times here too, we should not let COVID be different um, when it comes to any of our health screenings. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, um, you should not let COVID uh, be a deterrent for keeping up with your uh, health care. Um, I, you know, honestly tell patients that the hospitals have never been cleaner than they are now. Uh, Memorial Hermann has implemented a number of preventive measures and protective measures for uh, the patients, their health care providers, for the community. Um, everyone who walks in the door is being screened. Uh, masks are mandatory. Protective equipment is being provided to patients and health care workers. Um, infection prevention strategies are being implemented. Uh, patients are being tested before their procedure to see if they have COVID. And social distancing is being used throughout the hospitals. 
Great information, Dr. Nadim Joffrey. Thanks so much for being here today and uh, for discussing this topic as well. Thank you for having me. And for more information, you can visit their website at memorialherman.org slash colonoscopy. Switching breaks now. Coming up, we're going to get a check of what's ahead at the news at four with our friends Keith, Christine, and Justin. We're going to have that plus Houston Life. We'll be back in just two minutes. shout outs they always bring a smile to my face love seeing everyone and we love you back and especially on a day when it may be a little overcast not yes. so pretty outside so kind of lifts you up thing. right absolutely, absolutely a little good smile yep. and hello and a second hello because it's just about 3 30 now and by the way earlier in the show we were talking about snacking i can't wait i'm, I'm gonna make your snack at some point this weekend your chili Oh, yes. Taco chips. And by the way, do not put the cheese in longer than 30 seconds because uh, yeah, it, it's a problem. It starts to burn the cheese. Yeah, we don't need that. that. Oh, you can't have that. That's so we wanted to hear from you what you've been snacking on during the pandemic. And we're going to begin with Gigi. The question is, what haven't you been <laughs> snacking on during the pandemic? I'm with Gigi. You've been talking about the people who put on the pandemic pounds, right? Yes. Um, and I did the opposite. I actually lost weight. Did you? Yeah, because I started eating better. There you go. Go figure with those chips. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and Jackie's next. Jackie, Jackie says these things are so addictive. Oh, she's got some. The Dots, Dots pretzels. Home style pretzels. Those are so good. Are they really? They are so good. You know what? The best thing about me in my life is that I just can't stand pretzels. Oh, listen, you're going to love Dots, though. You think so? Oh, yeah. Best friend Lori got me on those. She Now, Jackie says she can eat them all day long. I, I know. It's it's so addictive. Okay, okay. Um, Gretchen writes in, the things I gave up a year ago. Uh, food with gluten, corn syrup, and too much meat. Now oh. we're eating it back again. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, it just happens. You know, it's, 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 we're in a cycle. Sometimes eating that stuff just makes us happy. It does, and uh, it's made us a lot happy. You know, <laughs> we've had a lot of reasons to eat that stuff. I know. You know. There's a lot going on out there that just makes us want to just kind of go into a little diversion. Yeah, so there's nothing part. a bag of Cheetos yeah. can't solve. Yeah, or the tortilla <laughs> chips with the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, let's check in with Keith and Christine and Justin for a look at what's coming up at 4 o'clock, guys. Hey, how you guys oh, doing? Yeah. Courtney, you are uh, in the high-end district there with Mr. Cambrel Marshall. Today. <laughs> Listen, finally got him over, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not going to be cheap. <laughs> so good. So good. And rocking oh. the most spectacular, spectacular bow tie, as always. You guys, oh. popcorn is my vice. Oh, I I'm love it. I'm surprised there's any popcorn less than left in Harris County right now. Yep. To be honest. Popcorn's a good one. Keith, you, are you a salt or a sweet? Oh, I'm, way, I'm all salt. Uh, sunflower seeds, oh. po uh, chips. Except yes, for the Snickers popcorn. that he eats daily. Yeah. <laughs> Do not eat Snickers <laughs> daily. Oh my gosh. You like your Snickers. Right before the 4 p.m. newscast, yeah? Oh my goodness. I love it. A true married couple right there. <laughs> He doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Uh -huh. I'll tell you one of the things I've been snacking on, guys. You can get it at HEB. If you see, it's like the Hobie Hot Saltine Crackers. Oh, those oh. are so good, Justin. Oh, wow. No. Okay. Yes, I got some of those at Bucky's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't heard of these. Oh. Mind. Girl, you need to get some. Oh, I'm, I'm about you. to get on them. Yeah. Life changing. Yeah, I was going to say, those are game changers. <laughs> Today's a good snacking day. Yeah. It is you a good know, snacking day. Sitting you know? by the TV, yeah. I know. I was going to say, y'all don't need me. You got Cam Burrell right there. <laughs> 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 I'm off the clock at 1 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> <He's like, laughs> oh, boy, that's what I like to see. All right, well, since you threw it to me, let's talk about that. Yeah, this is kind of what Christine was talking about. We've got this front coming. It's really ragged. I'm not concerned about any kind of severe weather with this. We haven't seen any advisories. You can see it's just kind of a broken line of thunderstorms. A couple of uh, quick lightning strikes there working its way just to the north up in uh, northwest Walker County. That's about it. We'll jump in a little tighter on that. If you happen to get caught in this, if you're running up from Conroe in towards Huntsville or the other way around, you're going to get a quick maybe quarter of an inch as this moves on through. But this is part of the front that is sliding through. Notice that we've got mid-60s out towards College Station now. Everybody else ahead of that is still in the 70s. So that cooler air is going to move in, but it will take a good chunk of the uh, evening for that to happen. 
So I think we'll see the rain pretty much wrap up by about 7, 8 o'clock. And then as we get into 11 o'clock, still into the 60s. And then notice as we get into tomorrow morning, I think we're going to see some pretty good dense fog too. So just keep that in mind if you're going to get out and get it run in earlier, if you've got, you know, practice or whatnot. But then notice that the temperatures are in the 50s and we're actually going to stay into the mid and upper 60s tomorrow and a lot more of a refreshing north wind. And that'll be the case over the next couple of days as well. Now, Sunday, and I'm going to talk a lot more about this coming up here at 4 o'clock, guys. We've got another system coming on through. That one is going to kick us into the 50s and low 40s as we get in towards next week. But we could also see another round of some boomers as we get in towards your Sunday afternoon. So I've had a couple of folks ask me, what's the better of the two days? If you've got things you got to do tomorrow outside, do it tomorrow. Sunday, you're going to be battling uh, some of the showers on and off most of the day. All right, sure. good to know. Justin, thank you. So we're also following the latest from the FDA today as we await the official green light on the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Yeah, we're hearing the White House is telling the FDA chief to approve the emergency use of the vaccine by the end of the day today, or he will be out of a job. You might recall an FDA advisory panel recommended the vaccine yesterday, but the FDA has to give the official approval. Stay tuned on this one. Plus, Harris County District Attorney Kim Ogg announcing charges in an election fraud scheme. What she's saying about the three people indicted and allegations they tried to trick voters in the March primary and in the November general election. And this one's going to pull on the heartstrings for sure. A story about a father who didn't live long enough to celebrate his son's 21st birthday. But you're going to see how he was still able to buy his son his first beer to celebrate that major milestone. A touching story for sure that's coming up. All of that at four o'clock, you guys. Oh, I, I haven't even heard the story. I'm already crying. I know. <laughs> Whew. I know. That's a touching one. Good guys, thanks so much. Again. We're going to work on those snacks, too. It's all about <laughs> snacking. <good. laughs> we'll see you in just about 30 minutes. Right. We do want to mention that, Kembrell, you have a great, really special event coming up tomorrow, but it's virtual, of virtual, course. Yes, yes. Uh, Prairie View a &M, uh, fall commencement. Fantastic. Uh, very honored to have been asked to be the uh, guest speaker for their event, and so uh, that's tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. For people who want it, they can go to the website, uh, Prairie View A&M website, and log on and uh, be able to look at that. It's just a great honor. Dr. Ruth Simmons, who's the president there, yeah. asked if I would do it, and she's an amazing woman. Prairie View has been an amazing school for a number of years. Many years. I always talk about the fact that there's, they're, they're, they're out there, and there's so many things they do that people don't know about. Right. I mean, agriculture is their basic foundation when they first started many years ago. They do so many things. they got architecture. they got biologists, the nursing, so many different things out there. It's so, a wonderful yeah. school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any advice? Maybe you don't want to give away your, your whole speech here, but any advice for <laughs> yeah. graduates well, currently? Virtual graduation speeches are long enough. I could probably do the whole thing right here, <laughs> but I won't. Um, you know, basically, I just keep it very, very real in terms of what's going on. These kids, and I call them kids, and my, my kids are 30s, in their mid-30s, right. and they're still my kids, but they're the pandemic generation. They now. really are. They, it's going to be a challenge for them. The economy is different. So they have to know that they got to buckle up. Mm -hmm. and know that any kind of smooth ride, it's not going to be there. No. They have to know that those great jobs that are going to be out there when they graduated, they may not be so prevalent, at least not right now. Right. But they just have to know if they've laid the foundation right, they're good to go down the road. They have to be patient, though. That's the big deal. I always love your motivational speeches. <laughs> I could call you every day, Kimbrell. You put, you put up with them a lot. No, I do, yeah, but you're, yeah. you always put it in perspective and yeah. in, in such a beautiful way, too. So that's what I love about you. Thank you. That's so great. Much. I bet that was a lot of fun, too, yeah. for them. Okay, well, don't go anywhere. Coming up, a gift guide for him that's not going to break the bank. I know, along with special discount codes just for you. Houston Life will be right back. And welcome back. If you're in the hunt for gift ideas that will not disappoint the men in your life, and who isn't this time of the year, <laughs> our next guest has put together a guide with all of the inspiration you're going to need. That's right. The, he's done all the work here with a list of gifts for him, all under 50 bucks. Lifestyle expert, John Salas. Welcome to the show. Great to see you. No, likewise, TGIF. Are you ready for the holidays? Well, sort of. I am going to be after this segment, so let's <laughs> jump right in, because I do think the guys are the hardest to buy for. We're not. We're not. It's we're, we're super practical. I mean, it's just really knowing, like, what their habits are and, you know, a few tricks, and that's why I did the heavy lifting for you today. So, you know, the first off, let's start off, let's kick it off with the most important guy in our lives, and that is the Padre, the dad, right? So I always say the way to their heart is through tugging through their emotional strings. And the way you do that is with personalized accessories. 
So as you have in the studio, as you see here as well, we have these cuffs by Isabel Grace Jewelry. And the neat thing about them is that you tell them what your story is, what your family story, like maybe you want to engrave the children's names on here or an inspirational quote that really resonates with that. Whatever it is, they will engrave it and they'll ship this to you just in time for the holidays. And these retail for $48, but if you use promo code Houston Life, you'll get 25% off today at checkout. Wow. Oh my gosh, and I love that because that is so, it's obviously personalized, but it's so meaningful. It's a wonderful gift. It is, it is. And well after the holidays, every time he looks at it, he'll be thinking of you. Absolutely. But another gift that's also a home run, no pun intended, <laughs> and shout out to Cindy and my, my friends at Gerardo Barbacoa near Northside because I don't know anyone that's a bigger Astros fan, and if you have one in your life, these are the way to go. These are dugout mugs, dugout mug, and dugout wine glass. And so what's interesting about them, they look like they a little bit like a baseball bat. That's because they are made out of a baseball bat. So you see, you put them together, you know, it's kind of cool. So it has that same high quality wood, that resin finish, and the craftsmanship is just top notch because you'll see that they also carve in your, your team's logo, AKA the Astros. And so these are pretty neat and they've been sh selling like hotcakes this season. So these retail for $64.99, but you can get them just under $50. That way you don't break bank if you use promo code FAT30 for 30% off at checkout. They are so cool. They're very cool. In the back of it, it says wind up. Oh, I love it. Wind up. Yes, yep. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's clever, it's clever. So another, another good like, gift idea for the more fashionable guys in our life because quarantine has given us appreciation for comfort. I brought some slides from Freedom Moses. And you know, these are also a hit with the ladies. These have been so hard to get this season because they're just so in demand. They have fun colors and fun prints and they retail for $45, but friends of Houston Live today, the first 25 to use the promo code Freedom Moses NBC will get 20% off at checkout. These are so yeah. awesome. I do own these tie-dye ones that we have in studio. These are not mine. This is part of the um, the display, <laughs> but I See, own them. Everyone wins with them. They're so awesome, and they're great for the pool or if you're running to and from the say. gym. Yeah, it, yeah. Raining, they're awesome. If you want to run the HEB really quick, I mean, it's this is yes. the way to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just hose it right off. No. Okay, <laughs> now we're thirsty again after talking about all these great gifts. What's in this box? Yes, perfect to go with the buggy snacks I heard you talking about earlier. We have Shots Box. And this is this is a fun one because this reinvents showing up to a party, right? So this is for the festive guy. And Shot Box are kits with curried selection of spirits of your favorite spirit. So whether they're more into bourbon or whiskey, there are boxes for that, or more into like sweeter dessert liqueurs, there's also a box for that. But the one that really gets me excited is the Made in Texas box. And so this one has like some bourbons and some rye made here in our backyard. But also the one that really like makes me kind of giggle and just like the best way possible is that they have a prickly pear flavored vodka. And I'm like, if that doesn't screw Texas, I don't know what does. And so these, with the exception of the whiskey box, retail for $49.99. And friends of Houston Life, if you use the friend promo code Houston Life, you'll get 20% off at checkout. That is a that's a great idea. It really is. Yeah, because you can mix that with almost anything yes. throughout the week, variety. Yeah, and if life. you show up with like a wine bottle, sometimes you may be a miss, or if, if you get the wrong right. spirit this way, it's an assortment. One of them is bound to hit, right? Absolutely, but it's a win-win. La lastly, we also have a gift for the tech obsessed, and that is mask phones, mask with built-in oh, earbuds. Man. You know, this is I think one of those gifts that is just like a, a sign <laughs> of the times. And so these are great for like working out and if you want to like combine, you know, wearing a mask, but also like the technology, you know, this is the way to go. These retail for $49.99, but friends of the show, if you use the promo code NBCH mask phone 15, you'll get 15% off at checkout. Oh, that's a dude. That's a, that's a deal. That, our mouths are totally open over here. The, our jaws are on the ground. You, you know what? Home run with all of these gifts, John. You did such a great Ooh. job. I love them and I'm using, <laughs> I know. See, I pay attention. <laughs> Cheers to you, my friend. Cheers to you as well. Happy holidays. Same to you. you. And check out our website for the links to today's featured products. And remember, we do have those promo codes on there as well. We love to save a dollar. Great stuff. Great yeah. stuff all the way around. Hey, coming up after the break, Lauren Kelly has details on how you can and your family can safely enjoy Disney on Ice while it's in town this weekend. From Mickey to Minnie to Elsa and Ginny, we're going to take a look at some of their amazing show costumes. Don't go anywhere.
All of your favorite Disney characters return to Houston this weekend as Disney on Ice presents Dream Big at NRG Stadium. Love it, love it, love it. That's right. They're following all of the COVID safety protocols, as you would expect, to make sure that your families fully enjoy their experience. And we saw Lauren Kelly earlier. She's taking us backstage now with more. Lauren? I'm giving you a behind the scenes look at Disney on Ice Dream Big. It's at Energy Stadium until Sunday this weekend. And here to talk about some of these amazing costumes with us is part of the ensemble cast, Isabella. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Now, you can't put me in front of all these costumes and have me not <laughs> ask about them. So let's start and see what we've got here. Yeah, well, starting over here, we have some of the citizens from Arendelle, everyone's favorite, Frozen. Oh, Frozen. Let me yeah. just pick this up. This is quite it's heavy. Very <gasps> heavy. Oh my goodness, yes. the skaters <laughs> are doing all of their triple axles and things oh, yeah. in these heavy costumes. Oh yeah, That's amazing. extra weight. Yeah, it takes a lot of professionalism and practice right. to really make sure that we can not only skate, but skate in costumes Absolutely. that are as heavy as this. Okay, what else do we have here? We have some sailors from our Little Mermaid segment. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, as well as a siren costume from our Little Mermaid Ooh, segment. Oh, siren. That's yeah. a very tiny costume, if I say that Yes, much. it is very short. <laughs> but they actually bring out the segment. So okay. they kind of have a, a transitioning moment with some beautiful water silks. And now I think I, costumes. I think I recognize this one oh, yeah. here. Another heavy one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this has got to be a part of Under the Sea, right? Yeah. He's our lobster friend. Oh, yeah. lobster friend. <laughs> now, how many people are in the cast? How many skaters are there? We have about 50 skaters, so it's quite a big cast. And how many costumes? Well, we have about over 200. Oh over my about 200 costume pieces. Okay, what is this pretty green one here? This is a dandelion, so you'll see her in the Frozen segment. Okay. They are in summer number. Wonderful. Oh, and I have some butterflies. I recognize these from Coco, right? These are the skeletons? Yes. We this, have a oh female skeleton. Oh my goodness, skeleton. this is so heavy too. Oh yeah. And wow. the skirts are really cool because they use the skirts almost as props in the numbers. They've got big sweeping motions with the skirts to make really pretty patterns. Wonderful. Well, Isabella, thank you so much for showing us all these beautiful things. I love a good behind the scenes and seeing those costumes. And it's yeah. really, you know, with the magic of the Disney stories and when it comes to life on ice, it's so pretty. It is, yeah. And I've, I've got mostly, you know, not as much testosterone as I do estrogen. So when I see that stuff, yeah, I get giddy too. I know, I know. it's so sweet. <laughs> I like know. The way you explain that though. <laughs> All right, after the break, we're gonna have a look at what's coming up on Monday's show, including how one local designer is using her skills to give back to the community. And as we head to the break, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Kevin. Happy Friday. Tonight on ET, we are taking Wonder Woman 1984 to an entirely different level. Everything we know about the surprising return of Chris Pine, plus what super director Patty Jenkins just told us about a third movie. Join us for the big show. It's all tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. Now, stay right there because Houston Life will be right back. Coming up on Monday's show, local designer and season two winner of Project Runway Recourse, Chloe Dow. She's gonna share how she's showing her Houston pride in giving back to the community through fashion. And preparing your home for the holidays doesn't have to be overwhelming. From tidying up to home decor, we're gonna share helpful tips to get your house holiday ready. I mean, I try that and it's just, I move, it, I move the clutter from one closet to the next. <laughs> I did something for the first time I've done. I, I paid somebody to help put lights up on my house. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And don't, doesn't that just lift your spirit a little bit? I had to do it. Yeah. I had to do it. This year, 2020, lights. Sorry. Yeah, I love it. You know what? Pray for me, though, because tomorrow, um, speaking of organizing, um, I have a organizer coming in to my house tomorrow to help me purge my closet. Oh. Keep me in your prayers, people. We're going to record that? If that I can just get out. Stuff, well, it? it's personal stuff. It may end up on, you know, I just hope I don't get buried <laughs> underneath a, you know, a thing of clothes. I can't see anything in my closet. Yeah. It's a terrible situation. Well, it's kind of like my house, too, though. We just kind of... It just shifts. Forget about it. Yeah. It shifts from one hey, closet to the next. Hey, you know the next. answer? To, you know the solution? Storage units. Storage units. <laughs>
Orlando just fell Not out Not that I've done that. I know. <laughs> so we've heard. Friends say, get a storage unit. Okay, earlier in the show, we were talking about a possible cookie shortage going into the holidays, so we wanted to hear from you. What have you been snacking on during the pandemic? Let's start with Laura, and she says, if it's a carb, I'm eating it. I love that emoji, too. <laughs> Everybody, this time of the year, they've been doing that a lot. Vicky says, Fritos and jalapeno pimento cheese. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yummy, yummy, my tummy. Not the best thing to eat. Oh, well. Oh, well, but you enjoy it, and yeah. that's okay. That's all that matters. Debbie writes in, everything I used to snack on, just more. That applies to food <laughs> and drink. Winky, winky. I hear you, Debbie. I'm kind of all the way around, you know? Yep, yep. And, you know, healthy if you can get it. Yeah. I still work out and walk, but I can't stop eating. Cheez-Its, Cheetos, Crunch, which salt. Which assures, which assures that you'll continue to work out and walk. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I love a good crunch. That's the thing. And I, you know, and then I say I don't really like sweets, but you put a bag of peanut M&Ms in front of me, and it's over. Over. You know what I'm saying? I got it, yeah. Kembrell, it was a lot of fun, my friend. Uh, Let's do it again soon. I'm ready. Awesome. Yeah. Have a great weekend. Thank Thanks you. for being with us. And we're going to uh, toss it over to Keith and Christine now for the news at four. Hey, guys, have a great weekend.